Hey y'all, what's up? Good morning. Hoping that everybody's having a beautiful day. Um, so my mom called me yesterday from from down south, and she said she just wanted to make sure I was okay because it was some couple rides that had broke down. And she was like, "Are you um?" She know I be in Newark and stuff, so she was like, "Are you okay?" Because um, they having rides in Newark, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm good. You know, I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then she said, no, um, because, you know, the hometown where I'm from, like, um, it's a thing called where the slaves was in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and they burned that down where it's like a, it's a landmark. And she said they burned that down. They broke into J.C.'s Penney's Mall. They busted the windows. They was just doing a lot. And then they had did a ride in Raleigh, North Carolina. And she was just like, it's just crazy. So she was like, is they riding up here? And I was like, I don't know. Because I do know that they did do um, a march for um, the young man that died from the cops. But I don't know if it got crazy or anything like that. But yeah. So that's what happened um, last night. She called me like probably about 12 something, something like that. So I was like, I don't know, honestly, because I was like out of it. So for those that follow me, I, I went on an interview yesterday and I'm going to go uh, to another interview in a little while just to do an application. It wasn't even really an interview because, see, the simple thing of it was is that when you go apply for these jobs and they tell you online, they be like, oh, you know, you coming for an interview. So it was, when I got there to the so-called interview, which was just the application filling out, and it was like so stupid. I was like, what the hell? What's the purpose of saying on Indeed? That's what I say about these, these places. Like, what's the purpose of saying that? Uh, you're going for a damn interview when you're just going to fill out an application. It was like 13 people when I got there. And if you ask me, it seemed like the lady was very uh, racist because it was a, a Spanish girl I was talking to. And she took her upstairs and then she was like, she came back and it was like a, like about seven black people. And it was like, uh, one Spanish girl. She took her upstairs, got half the case, took her upstairs, so I guess she got the job automatically. Then she gonna come back down and say, well, I got my girls or whatever. And then she was like, can we just, I'll just do an interview with y'all and see if y'all want to do it or not. I'm like, the hell? So she was like, okay, so this is how it goes. And listen to this shit, y'all. So, the job consists of you're working seven days a week, no breaks. You'll have a lunch break, but that's about it. No breaks. 16 rooms is housekeeping. And you don't have no days off. And how much you get paid is $11. The only good thing about that was that you get paid every Friday. And... um. It's from 8 to 5 p.m. every day. And my, I had told my mother, and my mother was like, uh-uh. She was like, you need a break. You'll, you'll pass out. Like, seriously, you will really pass out. So imagine going to work from Monday through Sunday, 8 o'clock to 5 p.m. Just to have a lunch. I won't have no type of life, <laughs> for real. They really need to do something about Comfort Suite Hotel. Like, somebody need to talk to management because that's ridiculous. Like, working them people like slaves. Not only that, it's only $11. Like, who the fuck does that? Like, so, she was like, and she was all nonchalant. Like, so, if, um, if I need you, I'll give you a call. So, one lady, she was in there, and she was like, okay, first of all, I need a job, but I think the lady, she spoke up. She was like, you need to like talk to your management because people need a break. They can't be working seven days a week like that. They're going to fall out. And she was like, yes, but we work hard here and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, this is some fucking, um, look like some fucking slavery shit or something. 
you you only get lunch and then after that you no break oh hell no like the fuck what you talking about so i'm still looking for a job <laughs> um i'm gonna keep looking I mean, I had got offered a job at Hoboken, but if my husband's van was working and the oil wasn't leaking, I, he probably would be able to take me or either my daughter would have to take me. So I don't know. I'll try to work that out. If the days that my daughter don't work, maybe I can work at Hoboken. I'm going to try to talk to the guy because he charges $15 and he's like, he get raises when you clean good. It's an Air and B place. And um, he was not like the other people. But I did apply for some jobs today. Um, I'm quite sure they'll be calling. My job is still furlough. Hopefully my job will be calling me back. But it's still furlough right now. And then I um, I had applied for unemployment. Um, so I'm waiting for them to say that I got denied for that. So then they could put me into the, the, the PUA, which is the Public Unemployment the P, uh, what, PPE. What do you call it? Damn thing. So, um, and then they said that that takes time, and then you got to claim. And I was like, oh, okay. And then some people were saying, well, you got to claim somewhere. I don't know how to claim that. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm still applying for jobs. And like I said, I'm calling different hotels and just asking, is they hire for housekeeping or whatever? I apply for some laundromat jobs. So we'll see what they say if they call back. And I'll just keep y'all posted. But yeah, I just had to just tell y'all about that interview. Um, it was mad crazy. I was like, you know, usually when you go to, it's like, indeed, like I could curse them out because there's like, oh, you're going for an interview. But when you get there, it's not even an interview. I hate that. I hate that. I really hate that. It was just basically you do an application, you fill it out and you sit and wait. And then it was like, we like, we looking like me and the other people looking like, oh, she, she took the girl upstairs and then came back down, gave her her information, gave her a pack. I said, oh, she got hired. Okay. And she was Spanish. And you know what? What tripped me out? The girl told me she ain't got, she ain't had nothing but just laundry experience. I'm like, yeah, that's some fucking racist shit going on. Like for real. Reason, and I'm, and, and, and I'm, I'm not even wrong about that because everybody else said, what the fuck was that about? You know, and then here she come and about, she go back upstairs and they like, oh, I think she's just looking out for her people. And I said, you know what? It could be. She could just be looking out for her people because that's how Spanish people are. But then she, then she came and she had got all of us, the seven people that were still there. And one lady said, well, I got to leave because see, that's too much. Um, it's a good job, but, and then, and then the pay, the pay sucks because, if you're a housekeeper, you should be getting paid like $14 to $15 an hour, okay? Because you work hard for your money, okay? Now, if you go to Jersey City and you get your OSHA license, baby, you could charge as much as you want. So, you know, it's just that I don't have it, but that's what my plan is. My plan is to get my OSHA license so that I can go and um start my own goddamn business, seriously. And, and charge people to clean their house. But um, that's what you need. So she was like, um, the lady was like $11 every, $11 per hour. And you want us to do 16 rooms. She said 16 rooms and the room's big. She lying. I guess she didn't know who I was because I was there before. Them rooms ain't that fucking big. Them rooms are small. And then so I asked her questions. I said, so what are you doing to protect us? From the COVID, do you got a stronger disinfectant? She said, no, I still use bleach. I'm like, no. When I was working at Wegmans, they had a powerful disinfect. It's called Snap. And I told her, I was like, you need to upgrade your stuff because you're using the same stuff you had before the COVID broke out. That's not good. Like, what's wrong with this damn hotel? So I was like, I was not feeling like someone, you don't have a vibe. I was like, I was not feeling the vibe for this hotel. I was like, no, they bugging the fuck out. They talking about, they just use bleach, bleach. Yeah. Bleach, you kill something, but you need to have a stronger thing, honey. You know, it's the COVID out. And I'm like, and 
And then another thing. Nobody was six feet apart. Everybody was close up. So when I got back the fuck home, you know, best believe, I had got me some Dr. Bronner's um, peppermint. And I washed my arms and my hands. Like, yes, I did disinfect. That's that shit. Because I, I don't know. And then I sprayed my hands with Lysol because I don't know, you know. And um, because nobody was six feet from apart from each other. Everybody was all, like, close to each other with a mask on. And I'm like, what the fuck? This just, I don't know what kind of interview this shit was. It wasn't even an interview. And I just felt like it just was not for me. So, as I continue to look for a job, I just wanted just to keep y'all updated. But that's how that fake-ass interview went. It wasn't an interview. Basically, application, write down what did you do, how long you've been housekeeper, all that good stuff. She just took your application and she decided that she want to call you. She said she'd call you. And you got 40 hours back to call her and say yes, that you accept. And then she tell you what you got to do. Or whatever. And I was like, wow, like, what the fuck? <laughs> <You know? sighs> yeah, but um, that's what's going on, y'all. But I did meet a nice lady, and she told me to go and apply for another hotel. I think it's in Newark. No, it's in Irvington. They are hiring for housekeeper and stuff. And um, we'll see what happens. But all right, y'all. Peace. Bye.